for God. Um, today I want to talk about is Yahweh, the God of the Bible, the same as Allah, the God of the Quran and the Muslims? I think sometimes in the quest for peace or unity, we can kind of get off track. And uh, Paul even writes concerning, you know, two people getting married, what, what does, perfect time for mind blank, basically, what does darkness have in union with light? How can the two connect? And that's kind of the same with, this, it can be applied also to, um, to Christianity and Islam. What do we have to fellowship about? There is no unity. Um, Christians, we need to see Muslims as not saved, not as part of the brotherhood because they are not saved. Christ teaches very clearly that the only way to salvation is through him. We believe that when we are saved, there is an ongoing work of sanctification where right now we are justified and we are made clean and we are made holy, um, but we are not, the work is not finished. Basically, we are no longer bound to sin, but we still sin. Um, basically, Christ gives us his righteousness. Um, theologians like to say Christ imputes his righteousness to us. Um, so our righteousness is not of our own. We are not made something greater. We do not find something in and of ourselves. We only express pure Christianity when Christ does the work. And then the Holy Spirit comes into, into our lives and indwells in us. And when he does this, he regenerates our conscience and our understanding and brings us to a place where we have the grace to want to do the right thing, but then also the power in that grace to do the right thing. Um, and so then, although we may still sin, we do not lose our salvation every time that we sin. Um, it displeases God, and we can't apostatize, as Hebrews says. We can't commit apostasy and fall away. Um, when we allow ourselves to live in sin and we grow ourselves a hardness of heart. But notice even in Hebrews, it specifies that those people who, who do fall away, that they are mature Christians. You know, when we're first saved, God expects us to act as newborns. He doesn't hold us to some higher standard. But the longer that we're saved, the more mature we're supposed to be acting. We can't always be doing the exact same thing that we've always done. As we grow, we're supposed to be maturing. As we mature, we're supposed to be acting differently. When we first get saved, we may go and get drunk on, on, on occasion. But as we mature in Christ, it's very, very present in the Bible that God says that he does not want us to become drunk. Now, I'm not saying necessarily that we aren't supposed to be drinking at all. I'm just saying we're not supposed to be drunk. And so as we mature in Christ, he expects us to stop getting drunk. See what I'm saying? There's an ongoing work of sanctification where we're where we're daily growing and maturing. Um, so our salvation is not of ourselves. Whereas with Allah, he requires, not only did he come out after Christ, so you have to really ultimately choose between whether you believe Allah or Jesus, because they both give different qualifications for salvation. Jesus said you have to believe in, believe in me and repent. But Allah said you have to do these things. So... If it is the same God, how come there's this disunity? How come one requires these things for you to do, and the other one requires your faith so that you can have a good work? As James says, faith without works is dead, because when you have true faith, you will have good works as a follow-up. Your good works do not save you. And this is one of the causes for the Reformation, is because the Catholics were teaching that you had to that you had to have good works to climb up this ladder, this proverbial ladder, or whatever you want to say, and then God would, would, would meet you somewhere on the ladder. But then Luther said, well, how, how far up the stairs do you have to go before God reaches you? And he never had that, 
that feeling of being justified. He never had that feeling. And then when he had, when he was, went through Romans, he realized that we are they we are saved by grace alone, and that which is through faith. Um. So when we have that faith, we get the works. Rather than seeking the faith, the Catholics were teaching to seek the works. Um, and I know there were a lot of good Catholics, too. I'm not saying all Catholics. But there was a certain level of corruption that had seeped into a lot of the leaders that was causing this. Um, so we really see two different requirements. Uh, you know, it's pointed out oftentimes, well, the Muslims say that Christians are, are um, I forget the term, something like of the book, and therefore they don't have to kill them as infidels. But if you read in the Quran, it also says he had to believe in Allah to be saved, and anybody who doesn't believe in Allah is worthy of the punishment. Therefore, it's kind of self-contradicting because Christians do not believe in Allah. Allah was a god among many other gods that just came to supremacy um, as the only god with Muhammad. Um, whereas God has always been the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And therefore, we cannot really accept the teachings of Islam without renouncing the teachings of Christianity. There is no middle ground. Um, some other things that are important is the name of Allah is simply kind of like the idea of a deity, whereas the name of God, Yahweh, is an actual name. Um, another thing that's important is that God is a God of mercy and of love, and Allah, we just really don't see that. He more has an idea of, um, you have to do this good to be saved or else I won't really have time for you. And so Muslims constantly have to work and work and work and work to get their salvation. Whereas the Christian doesn't have to pursue works to be saved. He has to pursue, pursue the work of Christ that has already been completed to be saved. Um, this is why it's so hard to reconcile a Catholic with a uh, Protestant believing person because there is this element where the Catholics, yes, they do appreciate the Trinity and they do uphold Christ, but it's really hard to find a uh, reconciliation because the Catholic because the Catholics affirm things like the sacraments, um, which has a benefit to your spiritual life as basically a means of salvation. They attribute um, perfection to Mary, the mother of Jesus, to affirm Christ's perfection. They do they throw in all these other things which have good purposes, but the Protestants can't, can't with good faith, affirm it. And it's the exact same thing between the, the, the Christians and the pr Protestant Christians, let me clarify that, Protestant Christians, and the Islams, because they cannot, we cannot with good faith, with good conscience, believe it. There's just too much indifference. Um, indifference, not indifference. That makes sense. Um, God, the Bible, teaches a forgiveness, but Allah doesn't teach that same forgiveness. He teaches this, this punishment that is inescapable. It's almost like to be a true Muslim, you have to fear and live in constant, this constant fear. There is no, uh, let's just say, validation, uh, for lack of a better word. So basically what we're seeing is we're seeing this complete contrast in character. Allah requires completely different things than, than Yahweh. Uh, Allah has a different character, a different personality in general than Yahweh. Um, they, they define themselves in different ways. Uh, if you read the Bible, um, you can see the idea of the Trinity that comes out. Whereas when you read the Quran, you can see this idea of this lone guy who spoke through this lone prophet kind of idea. And also it downgrades, the, the Quran and the Muslims downgrade the role of Jesus to just simply a prophet. But I ask you this, how righteous or how good of a man have been if his core teaching was that he was God? Surely he couldn't have been that good. You know, uh, um, if he really wasn't God and he was just a good moralist or a good prophet, and the core of what he was teaching was against truth, against reality, then he couldn't have been that great. Um, also, 
a god is a big worker of miracles, whereas Allah really isn't. He more requires a more uh, a more strict working. Um, also, God requires that the like I said before, God requires that the only way to salvation is through Jesus. Whereas Allah doesn't affirm that. Um, next, in the Bibles, uh, in the Quran, Allah is affirmed as a deceiver, um, as one who tempts people, as one who leads people into sin, um, and one who affirms things that are sins, such as uh, adultery. Um, whereas the God of the Bible doesn't any of these things. In fact, it is written in the Bible that God cannot tempt someone, nor can he be tempted by evil, because he is perfect, because he is holy, because he is God. So we're really seeing a, a core teaching of Allah being the author of evil as we know it. Whereas in the Bible, God didn't, never created evil. Simply, uh, people chose evil over him. But this didn't, doesn't mean that he created it. It just means that man made a decision that was against God. Um, also, uh, the Quran has many different errors in it. Like I mentioned the thing about Christians, that's self-refuting, you know what I'm saying? Where clearly it denies itself, whereas the Bible doesn't deny itself. Um, in fact, the Bible doesn't even have contradictions in it. And I'll, I'll, I'll do another video about um, where we get this idea of contradictions or fallacies or whatever in the Bible um, later. But for right now, that's not really the point. Um, and even if, let's just say for this argument that the Bible does have inconsistencies in it, it doesn't have inconsistencies to the degree of the Quran either. So whether or not you affirm that the Bible is infallible and inerrant, it still doesn't equate to the Quran. Because the Quran says such things that are completely, completely in contrast to each other. Um, like, uh, when it says that Muhammad was taken to the farthest mo mosque, um, but that mosque had not been erected um, uh, at the time that he was supposedly there. Um, whereas the Bible doesn't have such things. It, it, it's, his, it's, it's historicity may be debated, but it is still proven. Like, for instance, in the Old Testament, where um, the king of, I want to say Jerusalem, I believe it was King Hezekiah, was surrounded by the, um, by the Assyrians. Yes, it was the Assyrians. Um, and the, the biblical account says that, you know, he prayed and God delivered them, whereas the Syrian account says that he paid them off. Um, but either way, they affirm each other that there was actually an event where the Assyrian, Assyrians were attacking uh, the king of Judah, but did not conquer them. The main fact still remains, even if there is debate between which, which story is the true story. Um, also, uh, so we see really the, histor uh, the historical events of the Bible are rooted in fact, and you can go back and look and you can see that they work. The only one, the only event of the Bible that is really hard to verify is the people of Israel being slaves in Egypt. And this is because, you know, they were slaves, so they probably didn't have real nice houses, so the houses probably weren't preserved. And that's saying that they had houses instead of tents. Um, so there's really this I, this inability to archaeologically prove that the Jews were in Egypt. They could have been, but they also could not have been. So there is that. Um, whereas the Quran doesn't have that same idea of belief, it has more of a a vague teaching. Like, and some of the things, like I just pointed out with the whole thing about him going to the mosque. It wasn't even around when he was supposedly supposed, supposedly have gone to it. Um, um, God teaches people to abstain from the desires of the flesh. Allah, in many cases, encourages it. Um, also, Christianity brings an equality 
uh, between man and woman, whereas Islam brings an inequality. So in social norms, it has a difference. Uh, um, Christians deny the existence of multiple wives. They say you cannot have multiple wives, whereas that's not necessarily true for the Muslim. Uh, also, uh, the idea of heaven is different. For heaven, it's a place of living with God, where people are not given in marriage, nor... I hate it when I can't remember the scripture. Um, Jesus talks about, and you can you can Google this or read for yourself, um, about how marriage isn't, doesn't work the same in heaven as it does here. Um, and it also talks about our bodies being... Um, being renewed and, and being uh, perfected in the same way that Christ's body was perfected. Um, whereas the Quran doesn't have, the, Allah doesn't have this idea of man's depravity. It's almost like you can reach the higher level, level of salvation or understanding simply, excuse me, simply by your own power, by your own will, what is already in you. Whereas God does not affirm this. Um, um, Uh, and you can you can you can go through the Quran and read it for yourself and see that there's just such stark contrast between the two. It's something that you can't reconcile. It's something that you have to believe either one or the other. Um, uh, Yahweh talks about talks about a God who is transcendent but also imminent. It talks about a God who knows us before creation, who cares about us. You know, it talks that Christianity believes in a God that is above and beyond our way of logic and thinking. His, it, in fact, Isaiah, Isaiah, I believe, says that his very ways, his very thoughts are higher than ours. In our depraved, sinful mindset, we cannot fully understand or appreciate God's perfection and holiness. Um, like, for instance, people are always questioning God on why there's evil in the world. Why this? Why that? Why this? Why that? And whereas God gives us some answers, he doesn't give us all answers. And he has this just higher way of thinking and, and understanding things than we do. Whereas we, um, we, have, we live by a, different, by a different mindset. Not only do we not fully comprehend God or his ways... But then we live according to our social norms, to our biases, um, to our fallen mindset, like I said. Um, we live according to um, what feels right or what we think is right, which is pretty subjective, which redefines truth as instead of something that can be known and is constant, as something that is just defined by the majority of the time. Um, so in closing, I want to read something that's in the Bible Doctrines of Pentecostal Perspective, by Menzies and Horton. Uh, this is the fifth edition, which was published in 2001. Um, I'm sorry, the eighth printing, which was published in 2001. Um, and he quotes John Haley with his alleged discrepancies of the Bible. And this is what he says. There's a few reasons why, why where most people go wrong with the Bible. One is the failure to read exactly what the Bible says. Two, false interpretation of the Bible. Um, three, wrong ideas of the Bible as a whole and a failure to recognize the Bible on occasion for record... Um, on occasion, that the Bible on occasion records the words of Satan and evil, of evil people. For a failure to recognize that some accounts are com um, condensations of what was said or done. Co uh, five chronological difficulties due to the fact that Babylonians, Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans all use different systems of measuring times or dating. Um, six apparent discrepancies in numbers due to the fact that some passages use round numbers or others give more exact figures. Seven in some places copious errors crept into certain ancient manuscripts. Um, a comparison of manuscripts has corrected most of these errors. Uh, finally, uh, number eight, some so-called discrepancies were just a matter of a Hebrew or Greek word having more than one meaning. Um, and also keep in mind that when we're talking about the Bible, there is no complete understanding. We do not have complete knowledge. The Bible is not a history book. It has history in it. And it's also not a complete record of everything, although it has things that are necessary to know in it. 
So when we say that the Bible is infallible and, in, and inerrant, we do not mean that there are no falsehoods in it. Because we know, first off, Satan speaks in it. Are you saying that everything that Satan said was true? No. But it truthfully records what he said. Also, in Ecclesiastes, King, uh, Song, uh, King Solomon uh, goes on about how, how pointless life is and how, how, how nothing really matters. But is that really the truth? Does the whole Bible from that? No. That is simply his, his opinion after living a life of sin and self-indulgence. See, he had the wisdom to live right. But he didn't. Although he was the wisest man on earth, he did not live according to that wisdom. And so he came up at the end of his life believing certain things that weren't necessarily true. And we can see this throughout the Bible, where there's some things, and Job, and Job, um, God says, as he, re he reprimands the, uh, Job's friends and says, you have not spoken correctly of me. Therefore, we can know that there are some things in the Bible that are not necessarily true, but that does not mean that the Bible is, infallible, is not infallible or inerrant. Um, so, and the Bible also affirms itself. You know, it talks about how it, how it's scripture, how it's inspired by uh, by by uh, the Holy Spirit, how um, how it's trustworthy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. To be a Christian, you kind of have to affirm the validity of the Bible because it's really the only special revelation that we have in current use. Uh, obviously, Christ is the ultimate special revelation to mankind, but Obviously, Christ is not presently on the earth, physically present on the earth. Um, and with the Quran, you just don't get that same sense of security. So there is a difference between their character, between what they require, between their written words and supposed revelations. There's differences between them in almost every single area. So how can Yahweh and Allah be the same unless you sacrifice your core doctrines? And that I would highly discourage. Um, you know, I believe that, that Protestants should start working together more and that Christians in general should start working together more. But there is still a, an element of disunity because some Christianity's core, uh, doctrines greatly go against other Christianity. For instance, the Assemblies of God and the Catholics. There's a really big margin of disunity because they disagree on some very controversial things for them. Um, so there will probably never be a complete unity between the two, although they may may work together in the future. Um, you know, and you have people in, in, in Catholicism who are sincere, such as Pope Francis, but then you also have people who are insincere, such as, oh, well, I'm just part of the church, so I don't have to make this personal, and not even the Pope would affirm that. Um, and it's the same thing with the Sons of God. You have pure people like Dr. Woods, and then you have impure people who twist it. And I'm sure that it's the same thing with Muslims, that you know you have some people who st stick to the Quran and some people who don't, some people who believe it literally and some people who don't believe it literally. But ultimately, they are not the same because they serve a different God. Even the Catholics believe in the Trinity. So true Christians always affirm what the Church has always affirmed, of the Trinity of God, yet Allah, who made himself known after Jesus was on the earth, requires things to a more strict sense than even the law before Christ did. Um, yeah. And so I hope that this has been illuminating for you. Hopefully this has made you realize that, you know, they are not the same people. Um, Allah and Yahweh are two different different people. One is God, one is simply, well, I don't really know if there's an easy way to say this, but only one can be God. So either you have faith that Yahweh is God or you have faith that Allah is God. But in looking at religion, I ask, I, I ask you to consider this. Realize that Historically, Christianity is the only religion that has ever required so, I want to say little. Every other um, religion is based on one's, what one can do or what one can believe on his own. It's not, it's not a religion of putting your faith in something higher than you. And that's what Christianity is all about. 
Um, so following that pattern, Muslims relate more to other religions um, that don't require that level of separation. Um, really, Christianity has to be set apart from from all these other beliefs. It, it doesn't it doesn't fit with the others. Um, but uh, I hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, God bless.